Well, hey there, everybody. Welcome to Gather and Go, the podcast that helps you plan, promote, and lead better trips. I'm Brian Jewell. I am your host, and I'm jumping in your feed unannounced and unexpected today to bring you a bonus episode of Gather and Go that I think you are going to love. Now, if you are a group travel planner who is always on the lookout for new and exciting destinations to take your travelers, well, I think you need to know about one of the great cities in the Midwest that, in my opinion, not enough people know about and not enough groups go to. So we're going to do something to fix that today. My guest is Kelsey Meyer of the Lincoln CVB, the Convention and Visitors Bureau in Lincoln, Nebraska. Kelsey has lived in Lincoln a long time. She loves the city and she loves telling folks like me and you all about the amazing attractions and experiences waiting for tour groups in Lincoln. So you are going to want to hear this. You're going to want to jot down some notes. You're going to want to check out the website. You're going to want to get your thinking cap on and begin pondering how you might plan a trip for your travelers in Lincoln. So we're going to jump right into my conversation with Kelsey Meyer. All right, everybody, my guest today is the Assistant Director of Sales at the Lincoln Convention and Visitors Bureau. She works with the Group Tour Association and Religious Travel Markets. She's a Nebraska native and a graduate of the University of Nebraska at Lincoln with a degree in hospitality, restaurant, tourism management. Kelsey Meyer, welcome to the podcast. Hey, Brian, thanks for having me. Happy to be here. We're so great to have you. So when I think of Lincoln, I obviously think of the Cornhuskers. I think of it being a fantastic college town. I suspect that a lot of people that haven't been there don't know a whole lot about it beyond the Cornhusters and a a college town. So give people who have not been there a peek at the Lincoln that you know and love. What makes it special? Yeah. So exactly what you said, when we go out and we're meeting with tour operators, with convention planners, that's typically the first question we ask is, what do you know about Lincoln? What do you know about the state state of Nebraska? And they always mention uh, the Big Red, the Husker football team. Uh, They mention the stakes and the state capital. However, we still have a lot uh, to offer that's pretty, um, pretty much undiscovered. So um, we have a lot of hidden gems here in Lincoln. Uh, we have about 300,000 people here. Um, and the best way I can describe Lincoln is that we are a big, small town mm. located located in the heart of America with some of the most welcoming and friendly people that you can find. We have amazing local restaurants, world-class attractions, of course, the Husker Athletics. We rally around them and plenty of space to get outside and enjoy the experience of the great outdoors. So Um, A big, small town, all of the amenities with that small town community like feel. And that's what we really pride ourselves on. Yeah, that's amazing. That 300,000 size to me is just about perfect. Uh, Certainly makes for a great place to live, but also a fantastic place to visit. Uh, You know, in addition to that sort of hospitable and welcoming atmosphere you mentioned, it's also remarkably safe, right? It is. We were um, once named the safest town in America, also the friendliest city in America. And I would say uh, nine out of the 10 comments we received from visitors mention how great the people are here and how walkable our city is. And that's really what makes me so proud to be a Lincolnite um, is that people come and they feel safe. They feel that community just surround them. And you don't mean a stranger while you're here in Lincoln. Everyone's just just the best. But I may be biased because I live and work here, but I'll let the people's reviews speak for themselves. It's just a fantastic place to be. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So uh, I know you have been uh, working at the CVB there for quite some time. You went to school in Lincoln before that. So how long total have you spent in Lincoln? So I have been so I've been working for the CVB for nine years. Um, So right out of college, I started here at the Convention and Visitors Bureau um, and then four years beyond that. Um, So what does that make it? 13 years, 13 years, 13 years here in Lincoln. So I visited, visited growing up, um, on occasion, it was always, um, a great little road trip for my family to take. I grew up in the North Northeast part of this uh, state. So, um, spent a lot of time here growing up and just fell in love with the city once I moved here for college. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, I would love for you to share some of your favorite uh, local haunts with us and uh, specifically with an eye, of course, toward 
group travel and uh, the, the places that you know and love that you think our listeners would love to take their groups as well. So why don't we start downtown and um, kind of go from there and, and give us your personalized tour of Lincoln? Yeah, that sounds good. So uh, my personal favorite spot to spend um, time in is the historic Haymarket District. And I think this is very similar for the group tours that come through. It's a great hub as there's just so much to see and do within the eight to nine blocks of that uh, historic Haymarket District. The Haymarket just has so much character and personality. You step foot and you can just feel the, the good feels, the smells, the sounds, it just it brings an uplifting um, sense to to people who go and visit. So back in the day, a little history on the Haymarket. It was a location where people gathered to trade their goods, sell their goods. And it was just that that gathering spot. So beyond that, uh, businesses started growing down there. Uh, the train station filtered through there and it was just a manufacturing district. Um, So now in modern day, it's been revitalized to a more modern, modern take. And it still has that character of the brick paved streets, the historic warehouses. But the streets are just lined with the boutiques and the restaurants, the shops, the public art. I could go on and on. Um, It's it's just truly a fantastic uh, place to spend a day or more. And it's good for groups because it's very walkable. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about those group logistics. Sometimes there are uh, there are destinations around the country that have a really cool historic district like that. But for certain reasons, you know, maybe the the streets aren't accessible or they're too small or something. It's very hard to get a motor coach in. It's hard to drop off, pick up. you got to park outside there. There are so many headaches. So what does that look like for a group just even arriving, dropping off, parking the bus? Yeah, so there's plenty of bar- city bus parking right in the heart of our downtown. Um, and we have that all mapped out through our group travel guide. Um, and I can share locations. Also, uh, there's plenty of hotels that have um, reservable bus space right out their front door. So if a group is not staying down in the Haymarket, we can always place the bus or make arrangements for a bus who wants to spend, you know, four hours, eight hours, what, what have it on the itinerary down there. But the nice part is I would recommend groups staying down there. Um, Mm -hmm. It just allows for the flexibility of people to get up and do what they would like to do. Go see, spend as much time or as little time, um, depending on the activity level of the group. So kind of what a a day would look like um, down in the Haymarket. um, A lot of times we'll recommend starting um, early morning down there. And um, experiencing the mill coffee shop. So the mill, um, they actually uh, have worked with their master coffee roaster to put on coffee tastings. So much like much like a beer or wine tasting, but you sit down with the master coffee roaster. He gives you a tasting wheel and he talks through all the different tastes. Um, He goes out and he travels and brings back the beans from the regions Um, So he knows them inside and out. Um, You can kind of peek back behind the scenes where he's roasting the coffee. And so that's what really gets people people excited. It's something different going through a coffee or tea tasting. Um, And that gets them caffeinated. So a lot of times from there, we'll move on to a walking tour of the Haymarket. And um, we have a guided uh, history, you know, history tour, as well as um, that gives folks the opportunity to kind of get orientated with the eight or nine blocks down there. And then they're spotting out, oh, that that little boutique is something that I want to go back and see. Or I wanted to pop into the Burlington Antique Market um, Mm -hmm. later on in my free time. So um, a lot of times we'll, we'll do that history tour and then group leaders will let, let folks go to kind of explore on their own, do scattered lunches, being that it, it is a, like an entertainment district. Uh, there's plenty of diversity as far as uh, restaurant options. There's everything from your, your American steakhouse to Indian cuisine, Asian pizza, barbecue, Cajun, like the list goes on and on. Um, So people can just wander in with their, you know, two to three, four people at a time and and pick their spot and and have a nice lunch meal. And then if the hotel is down in the Haymarket, um, one of the most famous and popular ones for groups is called The Graduate. Mm -hmm. Um, The Graduate is a boutique style uh, hotel and it really encompasses the state of Nebraska and the decor 
and and you walk in and it just hits you. It's this is a Nebraska hotel. So back behind the uh, registration desk, you will see the Johnny Carson curtains and mm. the picture of Johnny Carson. You get up into your room and there's corn, um, corn drapes on the on the walls, on the winter <laughs> coverings. Uh, there's pictures of people drinking Kool-Aid. So Kool-Aid was invented in, in Nebraska. And wow. um, and things like the nightstand is an old TV stand. Uh, the TV dinner was invented here in Lincoln at the University of Nebraska. And the lamp is made out of an old roller skate because Lincoln's home to the National Roller Skating Museum. So it's just truly yeah. fascinating. Every little nook and cranny down in the Hamer or in the graduate hotel is filled with items of Nebraska that really tell our story. So it's it's a great spot. And people are able to just walk to it and kick up their feet after, you know, spending some time down in the Haymarket. Yeah. And, and the graduate hotel also is just right in the sweet spot of what groups want in a lodging property. Right. I mean, uh, the perfect level of services, amenities, the pricing is right on point. I mean, that's that's a great option. Yeah, it is. It's truly a great option. And it, it just brings a sense of character and gives gives soaks a better feeling of what, who we are here in Nebraska. So it's fun. Yeah, it's yeah. fun. That's great. Yeah. So a group's going to come to town. They're going to uh, spend some time in the hay market. They may uh, overnight down there. Uh, they're going to have a great time, but you don't want them to just stay there, right? Because there are some other really cool, unique things. You mentioned a roller skating museum, uh, which I have seen and is, is truly one of a kind. But but walk us through uh, what are some of those key things that people have to make some time to do while they're in town? Yes. So we have some wonderful world-class, world-class attractions. So the International Quilt Museum is probably one of the most well-known around the world. Um, they have the largest publicly held quilt museum in the world. So um, they have over 1,100 quilts on site, which is just crazy to, mm -hmm. to see. However, only a small portion of them are put up in the galleries. Um, and the ga galleries uh, change over about once a quarter. So I would recommend, uh, highly recommend for groups to do the, the full behind the scenes tour. And this tour takes you back behind the galleries where they store and preserve all of the quilts. This is where the volunteers are working um, to make sure that these quilts are preserved so they stay in their, their purest quality upon receiving them at the museum. So you go behind the scenes and they, they give you all the, you know, the lowdown on how they preserve, how they fold the quilts um, to store them. And then they also will just, they'll bring out quilts from um, different eras, different styles, and you get to get up close. And it's more of like a show and tell experience. So the guides really go in depth of telling the story on, on certain quilts. Um, you're able to go back and see some of the most prized and precious quilts that have ever been made. And it's wow. truly on an international basis. This is not just American quilts. They're quilts that come from all over the world. So it's a quilt museum, yes, but it's also an art history museum, which makes it pretty unique. Yeah. So for people that are thinking, well, I've had a quilt at the foot of my bed since I was two years old. You know, a quilt is just a quilt. What is special about these quilts? What are people going to see and experience and come away amazed by? at this museum. Yeah. So like other museums that you see out there, a lot of them are, you know, they, they may have the, the prize winning quilts of the year. This museum truly just tells the, the story of the, the evolution of the quilt. So quilts that date back into the early 1600s up until modern day. Wow. So that's my favorite part. I've gone behind the scenes several times with mm -hmm. groups and the modern day quilts, yes, they're cool. Um, they're beautiful. They have lots of color. Um, however, they have the, the modern day technology to make the quilts. Back in the mm. early 1600s, that wasn't a thing. So <laughs> they literally yeah. used whatever they had accessible to them. And it was all hand stitched. And a lot of times these quilts were made for a very special occasion. So a wedding or you know, a gift for a new baby. And mm -hmm. a lot of times these quilts really didn't have a story that was attached. However, the experts at the quilt museum are able to kind of pick up on their story based upon what the people use to make the quilts. So it's just truly fascinating. It's, it's a history museum. It captures 
Oh, just so much. I could go on and on. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, that's, that's fantastic. All right. So we've made a stop at the quilt museum. Where are you taking me next? Oh man. So the quilt museum is located on the university of Nebraska East campus. So a lot of times Um, we'll, we'll do a quick trip over to the UNL dairy store. That's always fun. Groups love ice cream. Mm -hmm. Uh, they love to see how it's made. Um, and then there's also a really unique tractor museum. It's called the Larson tractor museum. And what's fascinating about that is the big manufacturers. So like Case IH and John Deere, they'll send their, their tractors, their new equipment to Lincoln to be tested. It's kind of like a racetrack Mm -hmm. for cars, but for tractors. And so. They have this big diagnostic machine and that follows behind a tractor and it tests all the all the different things in the new model. And it plays homage to what we do here. And, our you know, a big part of our industry is agriculture here in Nebraska. Mm. So the Larson Tractor Museum, they test all these new tractors. So then the manufacturers are then uh, have that seal of approval to sell them. And a lot of times other states will look and make sure that that seal is is posted on that tractor because they know it's been tested here in Lincoln. The only other tractor testing lab is over in Europe. So um, it's Lincoln in Europe, (laughs) which makes it pretty special. So that's sort of automotive museum, but that's not your only like automotive kind of attraction, right? No. So yeah, we love, we love our tractors. We also love our cars here Mm. in, here in Lincoln. So the Museum of American Speed and Speedway Motors um, is headquartered here in Lincoln. Speedway Motors is just a local company, Bill and Joyce Smith. Um, started it and they manufacture automotive parts, race equipment, engines, things like that. But Bill and Joyce also had a big hobby in in racing and collecting things. So uh, this collection has just grown over the years and it is one of the most remarkable collections that I have ever seen. So this museum currently is 150,000 square feet. However, they're they're growing wow. <laughs> um, as yeah. they continue, as the family continues to collect. But they collect everything from, you know, historic cars, race engines to a lunchbox collection, pedal car collection. Mm-hmm. It's truly expansive. You, you walk in and you're just amazed by all that they have to offer. And um, yeah. I, I would say you, groups typically spend about three hours in the museum wow. for a guided tour. A lot of times we'll, we, yeah. you know, pair They have a wonderful event space so you can have a lunch or an evening meal there. If you want to do it for like an evening reception, it's really nice. So, yeah, oh, that's great. So uh, what are some memorable vehicles or maybe your favorite vehicle that you always look forward to seeing when you go to the museum? Oh, gosh. Gosh, this is so hard to say. Um, I really enjoy the the Model T collection that they have. They have the 10th millionth Model T, but I also really like the Hedy Lamarr's 1958 Royal Blue Cadillac. Uh, so it's not mm. only a cool car, um, pretty fancy, but her story behind it, becoming the most innovative and beautiful female movie star, it makes it even that much more interesting. All right. Um, I know that your state capital is also a place a lot of groups like to go. And there's something really unique about it, right? Like a lot of people think, oh, you know, every state has a capital. Nebraska's capital is not like other capitals. So fill us in on what makes it unique. What makes the Nebraska state capital um, unique is that we only have we have a one of a kind governing system called the unicameral legislature. But we also are only one of four skyscraping capitals in the U.S. and the only capital with a tower with a gold dome on top and a sewer that sits on top of that. And the sewer's use Mm. is typically just a lightning rod for the building. (laughs) But the interior features numerous marble column chambers, marble mosaic floors and murals. And it really shares the story of the natural and social history of Nebraska's culture. So I also want to touch on the unicameral legislature which is Mm -hmm. uh, a single body of senators who debate on bills. So all other states in the U.S. have two independent bodies who debate on laws. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times they uh, have to be passed um, by both houses anyways. And it makes it a little bit more difficult. Um, So Nebraska is unique that everyone's together debating on the same bills. 
moving laws forward in a more efficient and effective way. Uh, there are a lot of a lot of states who have looked into reflecting our model. However, we're still the only one out there. So it makes it pretty special. All right. So we've talked about the museums. We've seen some of the sites, but nobody wants to stay indoors all day, especially on a pretty day. So for adventure lovers, nature lovers in the group, what are some hot spots in your area that uh, you should take them to to enjoy the outdoors? Yeah. So. This was a big thing, especially during the pandemic. People discovered Lincoln. People discovered Nebraska because we have the space and the, the attractions to, to go to and utilize the outdoors um, and also get some education behind it. Um, so one of the most popular here in Lincoln is the Spring Creek Prairie Audubon, mm -hmm. which is a expansive prairie grassland that sits just right outside of the city limits. So perfect place to get away and just decompress, take in some fresh air. Mm -hmm. um, you can go on a little uh, little hikes. They have a three mile walking path. Um, they can send you out with binoculars and a little map to kind of guide you through the trails. It also has um, Oregon Trail ruts. So you're able oh, to cool. kind of learn about that history um, that was created back in that natural history that was created back in the 1900s. So um, it's one of my favorite places to go and just decompress, watch the birds, get connected back with nature. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, any other uh, outdoor spots people should hit while they're there? Yeah. So Pioneers Park is another one that a lot of Lincolnites enjoy. It not only is a park with trails, but they have a nature center. Uh, so you're able to get acclimated with some of the local insects and animals that are native here. Um, we have the buffalo and um, all the eagles, the, the insects, like I had mentioned. Um, and so it's great for families, too. Um, I send a lot of my grandparents and grandchildren tours to the Pioneers Park. Mm. Um, but for like seniors, we also have uh, right in the park, it's called Pinewood Bowl, which is an outdoor amphitheater and concert venue that's just nestled right into the forest of Pine Pioneers Park. Um, and we have, you know, this last year. So typically that that outdoor amphitheater is open during early spring through late, you know, late summer. Um, and we had 20 mm -hmm. acts come through and perform. Everyone from wow. Chicago and Sticks to Jake Owen and Little Big Town. Um, my husband and I actually, we, we went to a comedy show. Jim Gaffigan played late August. So mm -hmm. it's not only a concert venue, um, but performing arts venue. And just great to sit back and listen to music and outdoors. So <laughs> it's pretty, yeah. pretty amazing. Yeah. And so I assume uh, your organization can connect travel planners with some of the schedule of events out there if they want to sort of plan their trips around who's coming to town. Yeah. Yeah. Usually our calendar of events um, and the touring acts is released right after the first of the year for that next season. So we work very closely with um, the management company and can get group tickets, uh, special pricing for for groups over, you know, 15 to 20. Um, so that's, that's not a problem yeah. and make sure that they're all, um, sat in the same area, put together a little buffet if they want to eat out there and, um, just make it an all inclusive experience for them. Wonderful. Oh, that sounds great. So lots to do in Lincoln, but you know, Lincoln is situated uh, in Nebraska in such a way that you can get a lot of other places easily. So, um, tell us about some of the partners that you guys work with for, uh, hub and spoke opportunities and uh, you know some of those other places groups should include on their itineraries while they're staying with you yeah yeah so that's exactly it a lot of times my group leaders will ask for recommendations um you know they're traveling in in to lincoln uh, via motor coach um and as we're leaving we're heading you know, we're heading north. What can we see on our way there? Or um, say they experience something in Lincoln, like the Johnny Carson, uh, the theater, the Johnny Carson mm -hmm. theater here in Lincoln. They went to a show. What else can we see along the lines that really sparked my attention when I'm talking to the group leaders? Lincoln is a perfect hub and spoke. I plan a lot of my itineraries. They spend a couple of days in Lincoln and then the tail end, they'll go hub and spoke out to, to different communities. So a lot of times in the spring, I'll send I'll send groups west of Lincoln um, to the Grand Island area during the the big Sandhill Crane migration when 
over a million sandhill grains um, migrate every year. It's a, it's a natural thing for them. They come in and they land in the fields of um, you know, the corn and bead fields that have been harvested uh, the previous fall and they fatten up and groups are able to, to experience that natural phenomenon. They sit out in a blind early, early in the morning or mm. <laughs> late afternoon and either watch the birds wake up and take off to feed in the morning or come back and find their their resting spot for the evening. So it's somewhere around like 70,000 visitors come in every year to experience this crane migration. And it just, it's one of those things that it's hard to explain unless you've experienced it, but it really just, it's exciting and it's cool. I love it. I, I, when my boys get bigger, I can't wait to bring them out and just show them these birds are just truly beautiful and they're huge. They're loud yeah. and they're big and it's just a beautiful experience. So after they, they spend um, a, f- a few months here in Nebraska, they travel, travel north to the Arctic. And that it's just an annual yeah. thing that happens year after year. And another location, so I mentioned earlier, Johnny Carson. So um, he actually grew up in Nebraska. He was born in Iowa, however, grew up in Nebraska in a small town called Norfolk. And um, groups love to go, you know, pay homage to Johnny Carson, see where he lived. Um, so during the summer months, that's a very popular tour. Um, we send them north and uh, groups are able to go tour his his home, um, his childhood home. And if they time it right, every year Norfolk hosts the Great American Comedy Festival. Um, and so mm. it's just comedy acts over a three day, three day time span. And that's a lot of fun for groups to, to go and just have a good time, um, and laugh, laugh long, you know, some of yeah. Johnny Carson's most famous quotes and, and whatnot are brought up during that festival. And it's just a good time. Also, we have Nebraska city. So a lot of people may know of Arbor Day or Earth Day, but that is a Nebraska national har- holiday. Um, so Nebraska mm. City is just south, southeast of Lincoln and the community. Um, the, actually, the, the founder, Jay Sterling Morton, lived in Nebraska City um, in a 54 room mansion. And so <laughs> tourists are able to go down um, and tour his home. They have um, living history there, um, performance acts. Nebraska City also has a lot of trees because this is the celebration of tree planting. And so uh, groups yeah. are able to do apple picking in the fall, um, take hay rides through, through the fields and just experience all of Arbor Day and that celebration. Yeah, yeah, right on. And there's even a national park close by. Is that right? Yeah. So in a small town called Beatrice, directly south of Lincoln, we have a Homestead National Park. And what makes this interesting is that the Homestead Act of 1862 that transformed the world. Um, So the Homestead Act allowed any qualified person to claim up to 160 acres of federally owned land in exchange for five years of residence and cultivation of the property. So basically anyone, any family, any one person could go and claim 160 acres as long as oh. they kept it up and <laughs> made it fruitful. Um, and then it was theirs um, yeah. for good. So the national park actually sits on some of the first acres that were successfully claimed under the Homestead Act. So it's a cool place to visit. That's fascinating. And all these places are like within an easy drive, hour or so drive or less, right? Yeah, just a, an hour, right around an hour, um, easy to get to um, and then easy to get right back to Lincoln for, you know, an evening dinner and an overnight. And we work wonderfully. I work wonderfully with all of our, our partners across the state. So um, for group leaders who are looking for, you know, a tour that takes them out west to cowboy country, um, more towards a centralized location, Kearney and Grand Island, um, we're happy to work together to, to pair an itinerary and put it all together. So it's suitable for a group. Yeah. So how should people reach out to you? What's the best way for them to find you, to pick your brain, to get that kind of itinerary? Yeah. So you can call me direct. I also have a group travel planner on our website. I have physical copies. So 
if you reach out to me via email, um, kmeyer at lincoln.org or give me a call. I'm happy, happy to share more information. Taylor, your itinerary, we do um, some fun group incentives, um, welcoming receptions, different things like that. So I would definitely recommend reaching out to me because we're kind of able to give you some exclusive offerings through the CVB. And uh, you can reach me that way or through our website. We also have a portal, um, an RFP process. So if you're looking for hotel rooms, we're happy to source those for you to get the best rates and availability um, during your time frame. Yeah, right on. And that website is Lincoln.org? Lincoln.org. Yes. Well, Kelsey, before we let you go, we have some questions that we ask everybody just for fun. These are just getting to know you questions. So so no pressure. Uh, Question number one, when you travel, do you choose a window seat or an aisle seat? A window seat for sure. I just love to see the views. (laughs) There's some pretty cool, cool airports um, to fly into. So um, flying into D.C., it's Chicago, like in the middle of the, the city is pretty exhilarating. Um, watching out the window. (laughs) So yeah, I I prefer a window seat for sure. Yeah. Okay. Can't argue with that. So what is something that you keep in your carry on that you absolutely would not travel without? Oh, a phone charger. (laughs) Yeah, It's a lifeline. (laughs) If your phone dies, what do you do? It's your entertainment. It's your connection to your people. (laughs) It's your schedule, your calendar. Yeah. I couldn't go with anywhere, anywhere without my phone or my charger. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. All right. So if you had a free airline pass in a week with nothing else to do, where would you be headed next? I would love to tour more of like Central America, Costa Rica area. Oh, and I love, I love warm weather and beaches. So yeah. <laughs> and a good, you know, tropical cocktail, <laughs> A Miami mm. Vice or a Pina Colada. <laughs> you can't go wrong. <laughs> it's just an automatic happy. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. So last question. What is something that you have seen or done on the road that you wish you could go back and do again with somebody you love? Oh, I would say just the experience with like my husband. I would love to take it like, yeah, we we're on the road quite a bit and for work and oh i would say just some of the restaurants experiencing the restaurants Mm. different concert venues there's a lot of times i'm when i am traveling i'm thinking oh it would be so great if hayden was here because he would love this cocktail or he would love this this vibe of the city so yeah yeah that's that's amazing i'm like you i have a whole list of restaurants around the country that i would love to get back to with my wife yeah and I don't know, one day, one day we'll make it happen. And then you've got the boys. So who knows, you might be able to take the whole family out to some of your favorite spots. Yeah. Yeah. I can't wait. They're, they're still pretty young. So they're two and four. And so we were homebound with them quite a bit. It's not easy to take them out um, or on airplanes so or even road trips. So right. at this point, um, we do have a running list of places that we would like to go. Disney, of course, they're big uh, Mickey Mouse and yeah. <laughs> fan. So yeah. I'm sure we'll, we'll wander that way sooner than later. But yeah, wonderful. Well, Kelsey, it's been a blast uh, exploring Lincoln with you. I definitely encourage all our listeners to look up your website, give you a call, start thinking about those Lincoln tours. And uh, thank you for joining us. Yeah. Thanks so much, Brian. Well, I hope you enjoyed that conversation with Kelsey Meyer. I hope It piqued your interest and maybe whetted your appetite for exploring Lincoln on your own and taking your tour groups there. I can't say it enough. Lincoln is a hidden gem right there in Nebraska that your travelers are going to love. For more information, of course, you can visit the Lincoln Convention and Visitors Bureau website. Give Kelsey a call. She and her team there would be happy to help you get started. Well, that about wraps things up for this special episode of Gather and Go. On next week's regularly scheduled episode, I'm going to bring you a fascinating conversation with Bruce Poon Tip of G Adventures. You won't want to miss that. Until then, though, remember this. At the end of the day, we're all on this trip together. So let's make it a good one. See you next time on Gather and Go. Gather and Go is hosted and executive produced by me, Brian Jewell. Our publisher is Mac Lacey. Donya Simmons is our creative director. Ashley Ricks is our circulation manager and graphic designer. Our sales team is Kyle Anderson and Bryce Wilson. 
To advertise on the podcast, call Kyle or Bryce at 888-253-0455. Gather and Go is a production of The Group Travel Leader. For more information about our magazines, podcasts, and events, visit us online at grouptravelleader.com.